Hey everybody, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day today. I was reading through some of the comments on my recent Japan travel videos, and it looks like a lot of you are going to be going this year for your very first trip, which is incredibly exciting, and it got me thinking, what other information can I share with you that could potentially improve your experience, even if just by a little bit, you know? And uh, what came to mind is some basic tips on etiquette. As you may or may not know, Japan is very much a rule-based society. They have a saying that the nail that sticks out gets hammered back in. Now, it's not nearly that dramatic, but, you know, especially in large cities like Tokyo, everything has an order to things. People know where to stand, where to go. Everything is on time. And if you kind of understand that system a little bit and if you can meld and or blend your way into it, I feel personally, just my opinion, you will have a better experience as a result. And speaking of better experiences, if you know a few basic words and phrases, that will definitely exponentially increase the fun you can have in Japan. And with regards to the topic that we are going to be talking about today, which is restaurants and the culinary experience that follows, uh, it will quite literally open doors for you because in my personal opinion, you know, Japan is a foodie's paradise and some of the best food you can have in Japan may not necessarily be at the places that cater to tourists and have English menus or menus with photos that you can kind of point your way through. It might be a hole in the wall place, a mom and pop restaurant, literally one page menu, Japanese only. And if you can initiate that conversation in Japanese, put in that 5% effort, let them know that you made an effort to learn a little bit. They will come the other 95% of the way. Japanese people are very kind, they're very gracious. And if they see that you're trying, they will reciprocate. So for example, if you're asking them for the price and then they you know, speak back at you in Japanese, which makes sense, and you have no idea what they just said, you're like, wakarimasen, I don't understand. They will immediately know that your Japanese level is not very high. You literally just know a few words and phrases, but that's okay because they might just write that number on a paper for you. It'd be like 400 yen, show you on the fingers. They're gonna make it work out. Now, as far as the tourist restaurant experience is concerned, those restaurants that do cater to tourists, that's not to say you can't have an incredibly uh, amazing dining experience there. You know, if you've looked into Japan at all, you know that the level of service and their food standards are so incredibly high, you will have an incredible experience at just about any place that you go to. But for that traditional Japanese culinary experience, you will have to go to those Japanese only restaurants, which is perfectly okay if you learn a few words and phrases to help you along the way. Now, the very first thing I wanna to touch upon is some of the etiquette that you should know about. Situational awareness is going to be the first one I mentioned. Now, there's no particular order of importance here. I will just mention this one first because I did just talk about the certain order of things and how things kind of operate in Japan in general. So it does make sense to start with this one. And it kind of ties in with the whole, when in Rome, do as the Romans will. Well, when in Japan, do as the Japanese will. So, for example, if you see that everyone's lining up in front of a restaurant in a certain order, in a certain location, do the exact same thing. 99% of the time, you're going to be all right. You know, if you see that people are standing on the left-hand side of the escalator, stand on the left-hand side along with them. If you see that no one on the train is talking on their phones, that is not the time to pull out your phone and have an hour-long conversation with your family about how incredible of a time you're having in Japan. And also to tie everything into the topic that we are talking about today, which is restaurants and your culinary experience. When you are going to a restaurant where you see that other customers are taking their shoes off, that might not immediately click with you because it's just not something we do in the West, or I would imagine in a lot of other parts of the world, we just don't take our shoes off when we go to a restaurant. But in Japan, especially if you go to a traditional restaurant that has tatami mats, you will have to take your shoes off. So just that little bit of situational awareness, observing what is happening around you will keep you out of trouble for the most part. Cash is number two, cash is king in Japan. Now they have made quite a bit of stride as far as digitizing their monetary system. 
but there are still a lot of restaurants in Japan that take cash only. So of course, when you walk into a restaurant, you can very well initiate the conversation by saying, you know, like, do you take credit card? Do you have a credit card machine? Don't just get seated, order your food, get the bill, go to the cashier and then explain to them why you've made a foolish mistake and now you need to run to the nearest convenience store because you don't actually have cash and you got to take some cash out of the machine to pay your bill. That's especially going to be inconvenient and awkward when you don't speak the language very well. Speaking of being seated, that is going to be our etiquette point number three. Now I'm in Canada and in Canada, there are a lot of restaurants where I can just literally go sit down and then a wait staff is going to bring a menu and everything is as it should be. That's just not the case in Japan for the most part. Now, if you walk into a coffee shop like Starbucks or whatever, sure, you can sit wherever you find an empty seat. But if you're going to a restaurant, even if it looks like it's a fast food restaurant where you're buying your meal ticket at a vending machine outside of the restaurant, and then you give that slip of paper to the wait staff, you must wait for them to seat you at the table that they are going to escort you to. Don't just go and sit wherever you like. That's just not a thing. Tip number four, when you're ready to pay your bill, there are a couple different ways they approach this. They will either always have a bill at your table and they will continuously update that bill every time you order more items. Or when you're ready and you request for the bill, they will bring you a singular paper bill. You take this bill to the front of the house at the cashier and you have to pay for the bill yourself in person. Now, being a dumb tourist, as I was the very first time I went to Japan, I went to a beer hall in Shinjuku. It's still there. You probably know the one if you've been there before. It's like two blocks away from Lumine One. Uh, the one with the beer hall sign at the very top, right behind the big camera. <laughs> Anyways, I went into the... Um, I went into the basement of that building. I had a couple beers. It came out to like 800 yen. I just left 800 yen on the table. I walked out. And then of course the wait staff came chasing after me thinking I didn't pay the bill. So we walked back to my table and I showed them the money. And of course it was awkward and embarrassing. And I immediately learned my lesson. So don't do what I did. Learn from my mistakes and just take your bill to the front of the house never leave money on the table as is customary over here in the west and probably in a lot of other places as well point number five is actually a collection of different things you should be aware of once you've already been seated at your table the first of which is a lot of japanese restaurants will provide you with hand towels these towels are meant for your hands only they'll start wiping the table or the chairs or anything else with these towels again just for your hands now, there are a few different rules surrounding chopsticks, the first of which I'm going to mention I feel like is the most important one, but never stick your chopsticks upright in your food. I believe that has something to do with funeral rites and it is incredibly rude as a result. Similarly, do not rest your chopsticks horizontally across your bowl. You will generally have chopstick holders that you can rest your chopsticks on. And if they happen to come in a paper sleeve and you don't have another a place to put them, you can roll up that sleeve and rest your chopsticks on the paper directly. Now, if you're in a communal setting where you are sharing a variety of different dishes from a few different plates, always flip your chopsticks around and use the tail end, the part that's not going in your mouth, to move the food from the plate onto your own personal plate, at which point you can flip them around and eat the food as intended. Now, speaking of eating the food, it is more than acceptable to bring up smaller bowls closer to your face as far as proximity is concerned. So you can't slurp uh, soup, for example, directly from a bowl, or if you have a smaller bowl of rice, you can bring it up a little bit closer and eat directly from there. Now, if food happens to fall from either the chopsticks or the bowl as you're eating, do not try to grab it with your palm on its way down. Just let it hit the floor, let it hit the table, it's fine. It is considered rude to grab the food with your hand. And finally, the last thing to be aware of is slurping. Slurping is not only acceptable, but encouraged in Japan. In fact, it is considered a sign of respect because it shows that you are enjoying the food very much and the chef will almost always appreciate a little bit of extra slurping. 
So let's get going and teach you a little bit of the language, some of the phrases and the words that you are going to want to know when you are engaged in your culinary experience at a Japanese restaurant. So in keeping consistent with my initial point that cash is still king in Japan, the very first phrase I want to teach you is how to request whether credit card is an acceptable method of payment from the waitstaff at a restaurant. And fun little fact, which does apply to this particular case as well, something like 10% of the Japanese language is estimated to have been imported from foreign sources, which means chances are you actually know quite a few words in Japanese. They're just not being pronounced in the way that you are used to pronouncing them in your native language or in English or wherever they happen to have been imported from. So in this case, when we say credit card, we wouldn't say credit card the way we pronounce it in English. We would say credito cardo. And to ask the wait staff, one of the many ways, this is a bit of a touristy way to ask, but credito cardo daijobu desu ka? That means, is it okay to use credit cards? So let's move on to number two. Now, as I mentioned before, in Japan, you will most likely be seated where availability is determined by the wait staff. And they very well may ask you, nanme sama desu ka? Which basically means how many people are in your party? If it's just you, you can say hitori desu. If it's two people, futari desu. And then the formula changes a little bit. If it's three or more people, say the number plus nin at the end. So if it's five people in your party, it would be gonin, for example. And once you give those instructions to the wait staff, chances are they're going to say kochirae dozo, which means please have a seat here. So let's move on to point number three. So now we know that we can use credit card. We've been seated at our table. Step three is, of course, the next logical step, which is to order our food. And actually, the formula for this is relatively straightforward. All you need to know is the name of the dish you are ordering, plus the particle O, which is actually spelled W-O, but it would be the name of the food, O, plus the number, so the portions that you are ordering, and then you can end with either saying kudasai or onegaishimasu. Onegaishimasu or kudasai. They're both polite and they both basically mean the same thing. And just it's just that, in my opinion, I feel like onegaishimasu is a little bit warmer. It's almost like saying, you know, thank you for going out of your way. Thank you for the favor of providing me with the service. And on the flip side, my interpretation is that kudasai basically means I would like this item, please. So it's straight to the point, still polite. You're still asking for exactly the same thing. If I have a misunderstanding of the differences between the two, I'd like to hear about in the comment section below. So leave a message if you know better than I, which is very likely as well. As you may have noticed, I am not Japanese. So there you have it. But if I was to order a singular portion of ramen because I'm traveling by myself to put the formula together from start to finish, I would basically say ramen o hitotsu onegaishimasu. So ramen, particle, hitotsu means one, onegaishimasu means I would very much appreciate if you do this for me, essentially. I will have a table with the rest of the numbers, so do check that out if you want to practice different combinations of ordering different portion sizes, so on and so forth. Now, the other thing that you should know about is a different particle called to. And this is basically spelled the same way that we spell to in English, T-O, but it's pronounced to. And basically it means and. It's almost like and, it can be used in a few different things, but what we are concerned with as far as our culinary experience, and as you probably made the connection already, is to order multiple things off of the menu because you only live once. And man, if you're in Japan and you're at a nice restaurant, you might as well hit up that menu. So uh, to use to is very simple. You just have to, again, identify the dish that you are ordering and just say to, and then say the next dish, and then say to, and say the next dish, you'll be all right. You'll get half the menu in no time, and you can have a great time. So uh, let's move on to point number four. 
So now that you finished your meal, of course, the next thing that you're going to want to do is pay for that meal so that you don't get chased down the street like I did. You know, it's just, uh, but, uh, you know, I did actually pay for the bill. So, you know, in my defense. But the way you would say that is you would flag the wait staff and you would just say sumimasen, which means excuse me, sumimasen. And then you can say okaike wo onegaishimasu, which is basically the same kind of formula, same particle, that o particle. Okaike means the bill, the check. O onegaishimasu, same thing as before. I would definitely use onegaishimasu instead of kudasai in this case because you're requesting the bill. So I feel like it's a little bit more polite. Now, if you can't remember any of that, you can probably just get away with saying check onegaishimasu and they'd probably understand what you're saying. Just don't say bill. Because it would be like, beer onegaishimasu, and then at that point, you might be requesting another drink, you know what I mean? So just maybe stick with check onegaishimasu if you can't remember. Uh, but they will bring you that bill. Again, you would take the paper bill to the front of the house, and you would pay your bill there. Which leads us to point number five. So now you've basically gone through the whole process. You walk into the restaurant, you figured out what payment method they accepted, you were seated. You ordered all the items you wanted off the menu. You paid your bill. So now the wait staff is most likely going to say arigato gozaimashita, which means thank you for your patronage. You can respond the exact same way. You can just do a quick bow and then be on your way if you don't remember what to say. You can say arigato gozaimasu or you can say kochiso sama deshita, which means thank you for the meal. I personally say arigato gozaimasu at the end of every single transaction, no matter how small, even if I go for just a single coffee to go, or if I get like an onigiri at the convenience store, the moment I get my receipt and the product, I will always say arigato gozaimasu, which means thank you very much. It's the formal way to show appreciation and to say thank you. And I feel it's important to be uh, as polite as possible because we are guests and we are utilizing the services that are being provided to us to our benefit. So it only makes sense to say thank you in the more formal way, if possible. Now, there are a lot of other words and phrases out there that come in handy for ordering things, uh, just kind of being familiar with numbers and things of that nature. This was kind of a video just to, it's it's usually not something I would normally make. I'm more of a traveler, more of a hiker. But if you do want more videos of this type, educational, maybe some language instruction, so on and so forth, it's really fun to make. I, I had a blast making this video. So let me know in the comment section below if you'd like more instructional material on how to navigate the Japanese language or anything else. I would be more than happy to uh, create additional content. Of course, my pronunciation, I'm not a native Japanese speaker. Japanese is like my fourth language. So uh, just, you know, from a tourist to a tourist, right? Anyways, thank you for watching. I appreciate you all very, very much. Enjoy your trips. And uh, you know what? I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. Peace.